Okay, hey there guys. Um, we just got here with Jesse here at the Trek Bike Store tonight and we've got his bike up in the stand. Uh, we're gonna look at a few sort of really basic um, essential mechanical things to keep your eye on though, if you're a new rider or not. Things that um, just keep the bike working safely for your rides, okay? Um, so to, for totally new riders, one thing we see a lot here is people don't really have any idea about tire pressure. So a really rough rule of thumb, no pun intended, is if you can squeeze the tire with your fingers and it will deform considerably, that is too soft. That's way too soft. So right now Jesse's got about ooh, 40, 50 PSI in this tire and we're going to be running close to double that. So it's definitely a little too soft. If you can squeeze it with your fingers alone, too soft. Okay. Um, Another key thing to keep your eye on, obviously, uh, brakes. So brake pads, which are sitting here inside the caliper. Um, there are wear lines on them. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there is a line running down the length of the pad here, right where this tool is. So when the pad wears down to that line, they are done. They are time to replace them. And if you run them too much beyond that, you'll start to damage your rim, actually. So before every few rides, maybe every couple of weeks, just taking a quick look at your brake pads, making sure there's material left on there is a, a, a key point. If you have disc brakes, those pads will be down at the hub area, of course, um, contained within the caliper. And then one thing, another thing we see all the time here is when it comes to people's chains, 90% of the time, we see people either under oil or over oil them. It's very rare that someone kind of gets the correct amount on there. Like in Jesse's case here, we've actually used a little bit too much oil. There's a lot of uh, excess kind of coating the bike, which we don't want. That just attracts debris and grit from the road. So you want to have a little bit, you want to clean out a bit better than that. How do you clean it? Well, we'll show you a quick, um, basically for everyone taking care of their own bikes. Um, when you're done a bigger ride, or especially after a wet ride, a rainy ride, you want to have your oil. Now, you want to, the best time to put oil on is after a ride. So what you want to do, you finished your ride, you've got home, get the bike in the garage or wherever it lives, get your oil bottle, start moving the chain backwards, and start putting some oil on that chain. Drip, 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 drip. Does not need a lot. Okay, so if I was just topping this chain up, that's about all I would use, just that, that few seconds. I'm gonna keep the chain moving just for a minute just to work oil in between the plates. Okay, so now I'm gonna go away. I'm gonna walk away for a minute, take my kit off, whatever, throw my shoes in the house. After that uh, oil has sat on the chain for a minute and really worked its way in between the plates of the links, then I'll come back to it with a rag. And we're gonna take off as much as we can. So the thing that Jesse's done here, he's done a good job of oiling his chain, but he's not taking the lubricant off when he's done with it. So that's why we're starting to collect a lot of debris here and get really dirty. So now what I'm gonna do is take a rag. Same thing, I want the chain to be moving backwards. I can um, do this by just leaning the bike up against something. Of course, you don't need a stand. We're just gonna wrap the chain with a rag and try and take off as much of that oil as we can now. If you see just a thick blotch of oil, it's still too much. I'm gonna keep going until you can, it starts to appear a little more faintly on the rag. Still, we got lots on there. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> How dare you, Jesse? How dare you? So we're still pretty dark. Still pretty dark. <laughs> I put a lot of oil on it. Yeah, that's all right though. Better than not oiling at all. Okay, now we're getting there. So there we go, now it's starting to paint here a little bit more faintly on the rag as opposed to when we first started. And the chain looks a lot cleaner now, not nearly as much oil coming off it now. Um, so another rough rule of thumb is, if you rub your finger along the chain, if you can see two distinct lines from each side of the chain, that's pretty close to well oiled. If you just have one thick solid blotch of oil, it's too much, so we're getting there now. Okay, we're happy with that now. That's a better amount of oil on there. Obviously, we've got a little bit of, you know, there's a bit on the chain rings and everywhere from having it been over-oiled a bit too much, but that's okay, that's okay. It's 
all about learning. All right. I had no idea. Yeah, no, well, most people don't. That's okay. So after it rains, yeah. Uh, should, what should I be doing? Because it rains a lot in Victoria, and I've been soaking wet quite a number of times. After it rains, one of the the key things is to oil that chain up, and again, that's why you do it after your ride, so that you've yeah. got fresh oil on there once the ride's done. Um, oil will also displace water, right? So you finish a wet ride, there's lots of water over the bike. Oiling it will force that water out of the chain as well, prevent that surface rust from forming. Okay. Um, and same thing as we just did there. Oil the chain, let it sit for a few minutes, and then come and wipe off as much as you can. It's okay to wash the bikes, you know? Um, spraying a bit of cleaner on the drivetrain and on the frame is okay. You just, what you want to avoid is really high pressure. Like, so don't sit with your pressure washer just blasting the bottom bracket area or the cassette area, you're gonna get water in behind the seals of the bearings and you will shorten their lifespan. It's better to um, yeah, get your cleaner on the bike and then with a nice brush and a hose, it's okay to rinse them off, but you don't wanna sit there with really high pressure. We use a pressure washer here, but that's before we're about to tear a bike down and really work on it thoroughly, so. Um, the other thing I had is uh, when I'm riding uh, really wet um, terrain, I find that it's just like, it's incredibly hard to break. Is there, uh, like it just slides in a way. Yeah. Uh, is it just because the brake area, like maybe it's the tires are really? Um... Uh, no, that's just, that's just rim brakes on road bikes in the wet. Okay. So if it's wet out, you wanna. Anything I can do to help that? Um, you can improve it a small amount with different brake pad compounds and things like this, but it's, the big thing in the wet is just realize your stopping distances are 20% longer, 30% longer. If you have a, a newer bike with hydraulic disc brakes, those stopping distances are not nearly as bad, like they work amazing in the wet. Um, but that's just a kind of a function of rim brakes. You just gotta be aware that it's gonna take that much longer to stop. Okay. And then um, another good thing to check on uh, before you head out for your rides is your headset. Uh, we see a lot of people running around with loose headset bearings. So how you okay. check that is, Take your thumb and forefinger, place it over both this up the first cup of your headset stack assembly and the frame. Hold the front brake and then try and rock the bike forwards and backwards. If it's loose, you'll feel a knocking tuk, 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 as this top cap moves independently of the frame. If it's all snugged up, you won't get any movement at all. So that feels good. Jesse's bike here is nice and, and adjusted properly, still moving freely. That's another thing we often see newer riders uh, not noticing. Obviously, uh, quick releases as well. These, we do see a lot of people coming with these loose. Just make sure they're snugged up. See, that's a little bit loose there. Should be difficult to close, but not impossible. You have to put a little bit of force into it. Shouldn't pop. That's pretty good now. Shouldn't come apart too, too easily. Yeah, and then of course, before most, most rides, you're gonna wanna check your tire pressure, especially on a road bike. Uh, there's such low volume tubes that they do lose a fair bit of their pressure relatively quickly. If it's been a week and you're heading out, Check your tire pressure. So Jesse was down to around 50 PSI there. Now we're up to just over 90. You're way faster at this than I am. Well, I have done it a few times more than you. <laughs> Here we are. 